I'm a big fan of how they have it divided into like subcategories and you can kind of delve for uh, depth in one of those categories like embedded for instance or algorithmic or you can go for breadth and kind of get this really big cross section. There's a lot of representation of people in different skill sets within C++. Hello, welcome, everybody. My name is Andreas. Um, Lightning Talk topic today is DUB Detector Cons Expert. And I came up with that because I gave a talk yesterday titled Fast and Small C++. And I decided it's time to give the fastest Lightning Talk ever at CppCon. Okay? And I came up with a plan, and I need your help to do it. Because I thought I have a room full of C++ experts. If I ask a single question and get a correct answer, I'm off stage in one minute. So the question is, how much undefined behavior can you have in a consector function evaluated at compile time? Yell out the numbers. Zero. Do I hear any other number than zero? All right, see, I love when a plan comes together. You have a good plan, you get it on stage, you ask the question, and I'm not sure why you failed me. I can only assume because you wanted to see me talking again, right? We would have made it in 58 seconds if you just have gave me the right answer. So the correct answer is um, you can have more than zero UB in a const expert function evaluated at compile time. Okay, I don't see an angry mob here. Wonderful. So look at this piece of code. It's C++ 20, you might know it because it's the latest official C++ standard we have. ISO hasn't stamped C++ 23 yet. So what you're looking at is a very simple function. It declares a std vector with a couple of numbers of ints in it, declares a string buffer, and then I'm using a std filter view to filter out all the even numbers from this previously declared vector. I go over it with the range space for loop once, add plus two to every number. All the even numbers are still even, perfect. I print them out here, or basically I put them into a string variable. And then I do another round, same filter. I add plus one to every element. This makes all even numbers odd numbers. And this, my friends, is undefined behavior. If I now go over this entire sequence again with my same filter view and stash all of the numbers or of the, yeah, of the numbers into the string. You can see the static result below. The output is four, six, eight, and five. And if you don't trust me, I wanted to show it. Come on. That one here is confused. Sorry about that. See, we're not doing the fastest lightning torque today. So this Compile Explorer, this clang, says four, six, and eight. This GCC says the same thing. My static is where it passes. Five is definitely the wrong answer. We are trying to filter out all the even numbers from vector. I'm not expect to see an odd number. This is a function, it's const expert. I static assert on it, so I'm doing it at compile time, right? If you want to go and look up the details, this is what the standard says. Modification of the element of a filter view iterator donates is permitted, but results in undefined behavior if the resulting value does not longer satisfy the predicate, which I just validate, uh, invalidated. So, language UB, at least this one, you can have in a consector function since C++ 20. All right, might you know, say, I wasn't precise enough, right? You thought about language UB. Everybody talks about language UB in these cases, um, and not so much about a library UB. And I'm sure we can have zero language UB in the language, right? Well, it might be an odd case, but look at that. 
I have this function, don't do this. It's intentionally named like that. It returns the integer 42, but it's also marked as no return. It's a consecutive function. I hook up another one, say, call that one execute. That simply returns the value of don't do this. A no return function and a static assert on the result being 42. Demo for that one again. If you only trust the compiler, this here is Clang and GCC once again saying, yeah, that one passes. But by the way, there is a warning. You just return from a function that's declared no return. But it compiles. The rationale for that in the standard, it's a little bit more tricky than the previous one. If we look up what a no return attribute says, it says if you return, it's undefined behavior, all right, and then you have to go to expert const, and that says, well, there is one exception. If it's a no return function, the implementation might allow it, which although. So I didn't make it. Have fun. <laughs>